so this week, new products, let's start off with. Okay, well, we put in these Choco Keys um, a few, uh, a week ago or two, and now we have the keycaps to go with it. I'll show both at the same time. So maybe let's show the photos, because actually the, the photos Yeah, you can, you can flip through yeah, these. Yeah, I can do this. All right, so um, the, the chocolate keys are, they're not Cherry MX compatible. These are different pinout. They're different size. They don't snap into this. They're totally different, but they're really slim because the switch goes to the side, um, not from uh, the, the top and bottom. Um, and uh, so you can't, also the keycaps are different too. The keycaps have like these two little nubs instead of like the normal cross shape. I know it looks like there's a cross shape, but it actually uses these two little nubs instead. Um, but, you know, the good news is Kale, who makes the chocolate switches, um, and we stock the white clickies and the red linears. They're also like, okay, well, we also sell keycaps because obviously these are, these are a little rare because um, they don't use the standard. So we have clear, crystal clear ones, which are, which are they're just really clear. You can put LEDs underneath them, I guess, and you can maybe label them. Um, they work great with all the uh, chocolate switches. And this is what they look like from the top. And they also have opaque black ones. Um, I kind of like these. They're, they're a little chiclet looking. Um, very slim. Um, also like the uh, clear ones. They have these. You can see the two nubs on the bottom. Um, the two nubs click into the chocolate switches. And so you get clear or black. These are like the really the two options. There's also uh, like a pale white, but I didn't really like the pale white color. So these are the two options for the Chaco switches I got. All right. um, switches are sold separately than keycaps, so you need both. Here's our replacement overhead. Let's, there uh, you go. <laughs> you want to try this out? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it works. Okay. So yeah, this is very, yeah, very just, slim. You'll just have to show it that way. I think this is, this is fine. Okay, yeah. so that's Chaco switch caps. All right, All let's right. keep going. Next up. We did that one. Uh, oh, you already yeah, did this did one? Okay, I was, I was... No, uh, no, no, you were, you were busy. I was setting up stuff. Okay, so next up we have three things. They're all kind of the same, so I'm going to talk about them all at once. So if you're making keyboard stuff, oftentimes people are like, okay, I'm going to use some acrylic or some PCB, and maybe if I have a 3D printer, I'll 3D print something. But I noticed that I could pick up some enclosures, and these are like kind of generic enclosures for keyboards. Now, I'll say they're not inexpensive because they're milled aluminum and they're anodized and they have, you know, they're, they're kind of custom made. But if you would like to um, make a four key or a two key or a four by four key um, keypad with either custom PCB or by free wiring, you can free wire to these. Um, I kind of like these uh, enclosures because they're like very rugged, they're durable, they look really good. Um, and then we, you know, again, we don't have CAD files. We don't try to get CAD files, but we do have measurements that we've taken for you. So you can um, design a PCB or like I said, you can free wire it. So let me show maybe, hold on. So I'm, I'm going to be creative yeah. as well. New, new overhead is new. Okay. So this is just a demo of what it's going to look like. So you, for these, um, you do use Cherry MX switches and they snap in very nicely. And so you get four keys and, and you see it is, it is quite nice. Like it's much nicer than having a raw PCB. And then on the bottom here, um, there's some have two screws, some have one. Yeah, and I'm going use, to. Uh, on, I gotta, no, I know. I gotta, I'm gonna. What are you doing? Well, I'm just. Are uh, you gonna do stuff? I got. I'm just adding some. Look, here. nothing is gonna stop us. We are a gift. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna so, open this up. Here we go. Okay, so unscrewing this. These I think are M2s. So this is a plastic piece underneath. You can see that there's a little bit of height available. So yes, you can have a PCB and the PCB will sit nice and flat. There's little standoffs. Or to be honest, you know, there's enough room in here. You can just like touch wire, you know, solder wires to the, the pads to a mic controller and then just like tape it to the bottom of here sticking out. And then, you know, it, it's, you just have to glue it well enough or tape it down enough and then just don't yank on it. But um, you wouldn't even have to create a custom PCB. You could just use this as an enclosure. And once it's closed up, you know, who knows who cares? And on the side here, you can see there's a, a slot for a USB-C or, or micro B. And um, let's show the two up, one next. Yeah, they're, they're not all the same. They're, they're different in style, but um, similar enough, I thought I'd, I'd show these together. So this one also has a screw, uh, an anodized aluminum. It comes in black, just two keys, but you know, like you said, you just wanted a two key macro pad. One, yeah. two, one, two, one, two. I need that. Um, 
bottom has a key and then again you might have to bend the the, the pins a little bit but you you definitely have enough depth to, to well, actually know, stick I used a... to me that because I was one of the things I was gonna do is like switch different cameras but you know yeah yeah you can't anymore no. you your cameras no. um, also <laughs> nice little enclosure okay so that's this one so All right. So let me put that to the side. And then last but not least is the Mega. This one's really big. I'm going to have to tilt up. Thank you for this nice yeah. camera holder. I, I constructed a overhead system here. No, you're 100%. Yeah. You're, uh, you're on top yeah, of me. Thank I'm, you. I'm on it. Um, and this is uh, the 4x4, um, which, I, of course, is going to give you a full 4x4 keypad. And this one is really fancy. It's got, like, a flip-top angle adjuster. You know, people like they want an yeah. adjustable angle. Um, and then uh, also has a really nice big uh, slot for USB connector. For this one, I think it's it's the you know the cable is deep enough here I like that this one. you would actually let me tilt this up. I actually kind of like this one because you can tilt it. You'd probably have the cable actually go in and just you know you just maybe glue it or something. Yeah. Um, but this one it's really it's quite hefty. Yeah, it has a really nice feel. This is a very fancy keyboard enclosure. And um, if anyone out there does get one of these and you do do a model of this or, um, you, know, a, a, you know, what size PCB you would use, uh, do let us know. And then on the bottom, you can you can see that there's a plate and then you just free wire um, inside. We're also going to have uh, JP picked up one of our orthopads and um, uh, try it out and see if it'll fit nicely in here. But this is this is this would be pretty sweet. Nice. Now, I'm, I really want this. Anyways, so that's the uh, two, four and four by four. Anodized aluminum enclosures for making your own DIY keyboards. All right. And okay. The star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our team, and um, yeah, do you want to flip to the and the ability to uh, make overhead cameras? Yeah. <laughs> on the fly. On the fly is the SCD forty and forty one. Okay. Again, everything comes in pairs today. So this is a two for one. So let's just go through and, and show all the pictures. So there's the SCD40, and then there's the SCD41, and they look identical, except that one has 41 on the top and one has 40 on the top. Why have both? Well, they're, they're two sensors of the same family, and they're slightly different quality, and so they're slightly different prices. Both of them are CO2, temperature, and humidity sensors. That's right. Inside is a CO2 photoacoustic sensor. It's a true CO2 sensor. There's also a temperature and humidity sensor uh, from Sincerion, who makes the sensor. Um, all together, and it's very tiny and cute, and it has a PTFE filter on the top. Don't remove that white filter that you see. That's not a, you know, that's not a, uh, a pick and place tab. That's a PTFE filter to keep your sensor from getting uh, dirt and dust into it. It passes. It's not, um, it's not a through. screen protector that you should remove. Yeah, yeah. Do not, uh, do not remove that, <laughs> as, right. as we have learned. Okay, um, so you want to show the demo? Oh, no, let, let's keep going. Let's uh, stick here. So, oh, yeah. it, so the sensor is on the middle, and um, it's a CO2, uh, true CO2 sensor. It is the next generation of the SCD30, which you might be familiar with. The SCD30 is an NDIR CO2 sensor, which is really popular. It's one of the few affordable, um, true CO2 sensors that can measure CO2 um, uh, parts per million in air. And it is not approximation. It's the real thing. Um, the SCD40 shown here, I think it has 400 to 2,000 ppm. And then the SCD41, which again looks totally identical, is 400 to 5,000 ppm. Now, most humans don't live in anywhere near 5,000 ppm. I think you'd actually get kind of sick at that point. Um, so the 5,000 up to 5,001, that's what you would use for, you know, industrial or scientific or, or some other environment where it's like it's in a machine or something. It's where not humans are not. Um, and so you have to measure above 2,000. But if you're just um, doing, you know, a, a, the most common thing, which is you want to measure indoor um, CO2 sensing for, you know, is there air, how's the air quality? Is there airflow? Um, are, you, are you making sure you have enough oxygen? The SCD40 will do a perfectly fine job. That said, if there's a shortage, the SCD40 is out of stock. The SCD41 is just that much better. So let's go to the overhead. I got a little demo here. Um, so like uh, many of our sensors, it's I squared C. Hold on, I gotta adjust this. Yeah. This is, this is fun. Our, we're, we're this is our homemade, homemade overhead. overhead. Um, so this is, oh boy, this is I'm not liking the OLED. Okay. So hopefully this will work out. 
Oh no, live demo. Hold on. There you go. Why is it saying 114 ppm? All right, it has to wake up. It takes a, it takes a little bit of time to wake up. But um, the SCD40, uh, we put it on a Stemma QT board. So it's got uh, the sensor and then on the side, um, you've got the um, plug and play I2C connectivity. So you can use it with Arduino or CircuitPython. Um, I got the CircuitPython library, it's pretty straightforward. The Arduino library actually comes from Sincerion. Uh, they published um, their own library, which is great. And um, you've got humidity, 49%. You've got temperature, you know, 28% or so. And then um, the PPM, I breathed on it, so it, it spiked up pretty high. But this will measure, I think, once every five seconds. Um, again, from 400, which is outdoors, you know, 400-ish. To indoors, you're going to get up to like about 1,000, again, maybe up to 2,000 if uh, it's a little stuffy indoors. Um, but why use this instead of the SCD30? Well, it's a lot smaller, for one. Um, you can fit it in more spaces. It doesn't, I think it uses less power overall. Um, unlike the NDIR, which I think has to like heat up and do a lot of work, this one um, is much smaller and lower power. And it can even go into, uh, the SCD41 can go into a low power mode. So basically, you know, SCD30 does the job. It's reliable. People really like it. Uh, but the SCD40 is the new generation, and especially if you want something wearable or small or portable, um, this one is much, much tinier than the SCD30, and it works just as well. It's got everything um, same built in, uh, but much more compact, and uh, we have it plug and play with Python and Arduino support. So it's great for adding air quality sensing to your project. And that's new products.